ట్రెండ్స్ ఎల్ఎల్ఎం ఏజెంట్స్ ఆర్ బికమింగ్ పవర్ఫుల్ ఈచ్ డే బికాస్ దే కెన్ థింక్ రీజన్ అండ్ యాక్ట్ వెన్ గివెన్ ఎ టాస్క్ ఓకే దట్స్ హౌ వెరీ సిమిలర్ టు హౌ బీ హ్యూమన్స్ టు ఓకే అండ్ దే ఆర్ ఫైండింగ్ మోర్ అండ్ మోర్ అప్లికేషన్స్ సో ఇన్ దిస్ వీడియో వీ విల్ సీ హౌ టు యూజ్ ఎల్ఎల్ఎం ఏజెంట్స్ టు క్విరి a sql database in natural language okay all right so here i have set up a postgres database with uh, two very simple tables one is employee and then the salary so the employee table has three columns uh, the id name and the department and then we have the salary table with employee id and the salary now we are going to provide the connection to this database to uh, an agent and then query this database in natural language okay all right so we are going to use langchain and from langchain here we are importing create a sql agent that's for creating the agent and then these two are for uh, creating uh, the sql database uh, for langchain i mean it's more of creating the connection we already created the sql database uh using postgres right and then obviously we need an llm uh here we are using open ai but this can be uh, any llm okay and then uh, we are importing uh, this agent type uh, there are uh, different agent types uh, uh langchain has its own agent types and then uh, we can have uh, the agents from open ai as well okay so all the llm pro uh, providers are building uh, agents uh, on top of llms as well okay so here i have my open ai uh, api key in my environmental variables and then uh, these are the connections uh, details uh, to the postgres database okay the user id password uh, host and etc since it is hosted locally uh, the host is local and here we are creating uh, the connection uh, or this is the connection string Uh, to the database okay and then we are creating this database using the connection string and this sql uh, database uh, from uh, langchain okay so here we have sort of made a connection to our sql database uh, so that langchain can access it and then we need an llm so here we are using open ai we set the temperature to zero and then provide the api key and we are using model uh, gpt 3.5 okay uh, it is very important this temperature should be as low as uh, uh, it can be i mean uh, zero that's the lowest value because here we are not doing any creative work so that uh, the llm can come up with the uh, 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 sort of imaginative answers right here we want uh, the sql query to be precise and also use uh, the same names from the table schema so that we can execute the query and get the output so that's why we are setting the temperature to zero okay and then here we are creating what is called this toolkit uh, so uh, langchain it has these agents uh, the engines uh, toolkits uh, tools uh, etc okay so here we are creating uh, the sql uh, database toolkit okay all we are doing is simply supplying this database and an llm so finally we are creating the sql uh, uh, sql agent uh, again we supply the llm model now this might look redundant because here we have already supplied uh, the llm model right uh, the reason is uh, this toolkit concept and the agent concept uh, they uh, they are uh, different because this toolkit we might supply to something else uh, where we we may not provide the llm right so that's why the toolkit as well as agent they both require uh, the llm right now as i mentioned langchain it's an ecosystem of tools agents engines uh, to do uh, complex generative ai tasks okay so here these uh, agents can pass the information uh, uh, using the tool or we can supply agents to the tools a uh, tools to the agents etc uh, etc et right all right and then here we are supplying the llm and also the our sql uh, database toolkit 
now we enable this verbose is equal to true so that we can see uh, the steps uh, the agent is taking okay we want to see uh, the reasoning as well as the action action it is taking all right and finally this agent type so again we have multiple agent types so here we are using uh, this zero shot react uh, means reason and act okay a description now we have another agent for example from open ai uh, it's this open ai functions okay but both would work uh, exactly the same all right and then here we have our agent so we can run agent with queries in natural language so here we are asking how many employees uh, do we have okay so let, let's let's see what let's say somebody provided us uh, this database and somebody uh, uh, asked this question what do we do first we look at the tables we have in the database and then we'll figure out which table uh, might have the employee information and after figuring out the table we will do the count query right so let's see if this llm agent uh, is able to do the same all right so here it is entering uh, into the execution now first it is saying i need to list all the tables so it has this action action input observation and thought okay so those are the four things at every step the agent will be doing four things the action it is going to take what input it need and what's the output so this observation is output and then uh, this is the conclusion sort of what it learned at that step and what it needs to do in the next step okay so these are the four step uh, uh, the process so first it's saying i need to list all the tables okay uh, here input is empty that's because uh, uh, it's a it's a it's a full database schema and in the next example you will see specific input okay so the observation so it has listed the tables in the database and it found out there is employee and salary two tables okay and then the thought so it is thinking that this employee table probably has the employee information right because our question is how many employees do we have so it is saying i should query the schema of the employee table to see which columns i can use okay so that's the going to be the next action okay now here we have the action so this time it is going to do database schema so earlier it is database list tables but this time it is database schema now what is the input it is saying i need to take this employee table as an input and i need to find out what its schema okay so here we have the observation so the observation is the schema of the table and a couple of uh, couple of records so that it can understand uh, the better now comes the thought so what it learned from this action or the observation right so it's saying i should query the employee table to get the number of employees so this it confirmed it confirmed right so earlier it is saying probably employee table has the answer to the question uh, let me check that by looking at the schema of the table now looking at the schema of the table it figured out it has this employee id and the name columns and then it thought okay now i simply need to use this table to query to get the number of employees okay so it is saying action so this time the action is database query okay so the action input it is the select count star from uh, employee okay so the observation it get the output as 5 and then we get the thought so before we go to the thought let's see what sort of actions it took so far right so the first action it lists the tables in the database and the second action it query the schema of the employee table and then here it actually made a query to query the employee table okay now ignore this part because i am using a free uh, account on open ai it has these rate limits but if you have a paid account uh, we don't hit these rate limits like uh, three per minute uh, this thing you see right so you can ignore that warning okay so after finding this the thought is so it's saying now i know the final answer the, the final answer is we have five employees okay so that's where the chain has uh, finished and this is the output we get okay 
So, as you saw, after we ask uh, the question, uh, the LLM agent is doing a series of steps. Each step consists of four things. Okay, the action, action input, observation, and the thought. Okay, so uh, I'll just quickly repeat. So first. Given this question, it thought maybe I should first list the tables. It found out these two tables and then it reasoned, okay, there is an employee table which probably has the answer to the question. So the next action is, what is the schema of this particular table? So the input is employee table and this is what uh, the observation, okay, this is what the sort of output. And then the thought is, yes, this table has employee ID and name columns. Now I can use this uh, table uh, to count the number of employees. So, and then the action is to make a query and the input is the actual uh, SQL query. And here we have the observation and the thought. This is the final thought it said. Now I know the final answer and uh, we have five employees. Okay, so it has finished the chain. Okay, the reason it's called, uh, as you probably uh, uh, know by now, uh, it's a series of steps. Okay, so we have five employees. All right, uh, here we have one more question. A name of the employee with highest salary. Okay, uh, as you can imagine now, so the first uh, action is list the tables in the database. We have the two tables and then it is saying I should query the schema of both employee and salary tables. See here, even though it has the salary table, it figured out it need to query the schema of only employee table. But for this question, because it need to know both the employee name and the salary, uh, which is in two different tables. So it is saying I need to query the schema of these two tables. Okay, so the action is schema. And here we have the first table with three records. And here we have the salary table uh, with three more records. Uh, uh, as an example and then here it has a thought okay I should query the employee table to get the name of the employee table with the highest salary okay and action here we have the action so if you look at the SQL query uh, this is the SQL query so we are getting the name from employee table uh, here we are making an inner join uh, with the salary table using the employee ID from the employee table as well as uh, the salary table, okay? So we have joined the two tables and then uh, it is ordering by the salary in descending and finally taking a limit of 10. It should take only one, but I think once it does that, then in the next step, it will pick up the first value. So here it has, uh, these employees salary in descending order. So Olivia has the highest salary, Liam has the lowest salary. And then here it has the thought. Now I know the final answer since for the question you asked, you wanted to know only the employee with the highest salary. So from this one, Olivia uh, has the highest salary. Okay, all right. Uh, one more question. I won't go into the details, but here we are simply asking which department has the highest number of employees and how many are they? Uh, let's quickly see if it's following uh, the same process. Okay. Uh, list the tables. And it figured out it need employees table only to answer the question. So it looked at the schema of the employee table and then uh, it is generating this query. Uh, so basically uh, we have the department and the number of times the department appeared. Uh, so here we are taking the count. Uh, that's the number of employees for the department. So here we group by the department order by the number of employees in the descending order. So here we have two employees in IT, one in sales, one in finance, one in HR, which is what uh, we have here, right? 
so two in IT, one in finance, one in HR, and one in sales. Okay, and finally it will have the answer. I know the final answer. The final answer is the department with the highest number of employees is IT uh, with two employees. See how well it structured its response uh, to our question, right? So here our question, which department has the highest number of employees and how many are they? It has structured the response so that it aligned very well with the way we phrase the question. So the department with the highest number of employees is IT and it has two employees, okay? I'll quickly summarize. Uh, so all we need is uh, the standard uh, SQL database connection stuff. So here we have the database URI and then here we have created the uh, database uh, sort of connection, okay? And then we need an LLM uh, so that the agent can uh, do the reasoning and create uh, the SQL queries, etc. And here we have created a toolkit out of the database. And finally, we are creating uh, an agent, the SQL agent, by providing the LLM model and the toolkit. So these two are the mandatory parameters. And then we enable the verbose to true so that we can see the thought process of this agent. And then we can choose the agent type. So once we have the agent, we can start querying and we can see uh, the steps uh, taken by the uh, agent and at each step, what are the four things it is doing? What is the action? What uh, is the input, the observation and the thought, okay? Uh, so as I mentioned, the agents are becoming very, very powerful each day. And we are going to see and hear more about agents uh, in all generative AI applications. That's all for this video. Thank you very much.